Hey everyone, John P. here. Today, I'm gonna to be answering some questions that you've been asking me in various places, but predominantly on my Instagram, the real John P. From time to time, I do post a story where you can ask me questions there, but also I'm fielding questions and just different places where people have asked them, uh, especially in recent times, like at delraywatch.com. We have a form for it where you can ask questions, uh, emails, and so many other places. So this is gonna be a collection, but I'm gonna talk about you know, Patek Philippe watches, why some of the watches look a little bit different, uh, especially the white gold examples. I'm gonna be talking about Rolex watches, which watches I think are just underappreciated, undervalued, and so many other things. So rest assured, there's probably uh, something in this video for you uh, if you're at least a watch collector. Now on the wrist today, I actually have a two-tone uh, Omega Seamaster Aquaterra uh, on a canvas strap. Pretty cool uh, watch and configuration for the summer. So let's get right into it. The first question uh, that I found was, this person wants to know what is the most underrated current Rolex model? They simply ask, what is the most current underrated Rolex model? And this is going to be uh, probably for me the 124273, the newer 36 millimeter two-tone Rolex Explorer, the Rolex Explorer one, uh, some may call it. I just think it's cool. I think it's fun. If you can't tell, I do enjoy two-tone sometimes. It's, you know, it kind of, two-tone used to be that kind of retirement watch, right? The two-tone Rolex Datejust, for example. But now it's almost kind of, you know, you want a little something extra over the stainless steel. You want a little bit of pizzazz, but you don't want to go full bling with it. And I think that's kind of cool because it's like, in a way, half tool watch with the stainless steel and half you know, more refined in a way with the precious metal. I think it's cool, there's something interesting about it, and this particular Rolex model is trading pre-owned under retail, and that's rare for a Rolex sport watch current catalog, especially a newer watch, so I think it's cool. Uh, still, let me know what you think in the comments below, just not a popular watch for whatever reason. This next person asks, hey John P, I love Delray Watch and the channel. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. And they go on to say, outside of Delray Watch, do you work on any other businesses or projects? Yes, you know, I've been in technology and before this I was a fractional CTO. I had a tech consulting firm where I would essentially be a fractional CTO, a part-time chief technology officer for companies coming up with their technology strategy because that is what I did. Before I got in the watch industry, I was the CTO of some companies and then I've kind of progressed into investing in different startups over the years. Not a ton of it, but in recent times, I've been seeing very interesting things around AI and e-commerce, and so many things are changing. So I've been doing that a little bit more uh, in, the, in you know, the trailing months up until to now, to now. So if you do have a startup, uh, whether it's in the watch industry or not, or a micro brand or anything like that, if there's a deal uh, and you're looking for some type of investment, I'll put a link in the, in the, des uh, in the description of this video below where you can kind of uh, write a short pitch and if it's interesting, uh, I'll respond to you in that way. I'm looking at all different kinds of industries, but I do like evergreen industries and uh, more of the essentials to kind of you know, balance out between the watch industry and something that's maybe more of a necessity. But feel free, anything you have, comment uh, below, that there'll be a link. Now the next question is, what do you think of new smaller Moser Pioneer size? Yes, uh, you know, in recent times, you know, within the last year, H Moser, a watch brand that I talk about a lot, but you know, we carry many of them at Delray Watch. They released a smaller version of the Pioneer, the more sporty, rugged, durable watch. I think this is great because for me personally, with a six and a half inch wrist, and believe it or not guys, many people do fall in this category, especially internationally, let's not forget, it just kind of alienating to have these pretty elongated case shapes that H. Moser got into. They used to make a smaller sizes of some of their watches like the Mayu, which I personally owned in a 38 millimeter size, but they kind of upped the size, especially on these models. So I like to see it because it opens up, you know, the, the collector group for H. Moser to be more than just people that have a larger wrist size. So I think that's very cool and I think it's a great move by H. Moser. Next question, do you ever get bored of watches? I won't lie to you, sometimes I can suffer from watch overload, right? I mean, I have literally been handling and researching and dealing watches every day since you know, the last 12 years. You know, 
as a hobby and then as a career in some aspect, it's really, I've really been extremely passionate about it. So there are some days where, you know, after 12 hours of watches, I want to do literally anything else, go for a run or go to the gym or work out or something a little more active. But I don't, you know, dislike watches because I still have a passion for it. But I think it's fair to say that if you do something enough, you just need a little bit of a break. And that is how I perceive it. Still love them, but sometimes you just have to, uh, you know, do something to kind of refresh and revitalize your passion, if you know what I mean. Next question, this is kind of an interesting thing. They, they say the date, marry, kill. It's a thing that I think like younger people kind of did, you know, uh, I, you know they say, oh, would you date, marry, kill, kill or like a celebrity or something like that. It's basically, do you, do you like something? Do you kind of like it or do you hate it type of, uh, type of thing. But they ask me this specifically with Raymond Weil, Mito, and Oris. Well, I'll say that Raymond Weil has been kind of coming out with some pretty cool designs, but a lot of them have been copycat recently, but they're kind of in that more affordable category of more popular designs. You know, they have a watch that looks a lot like a, a Batman, for example, and some of the others. So I would say I'm not really, you know, let's, let's get rid of that one. They have some interesting things, but for me, nothing really draws me in. And then we have Mito, which they've been doing some cool things after they've kind of revitalized the brand the last five years. But for me personally, I think also they tend to do a bit of copycat, which is gonna happen in watches. There's only so many things you can make, right? There is some limitations when it comes to the designs, I think. But, uh, you know, it's okay, but I put that kind of in between. And Oris, I genuinely like what they do, and I think they stay true to themselves, especially with the Aquas line, which can be difficult to do in dive watches. So I would put it that way. Uh, but, you know, the date, Mary kill thing, I'm not exactly sure how to put it in that context, if you will. Now, the next question is, how do most collectors deal with having a taste that exceeds their budget? Well, I think this all just depends on your spending habits, right? I mean, I don't personally have too much insight into, you know, the net worth or liquid assets of customers that are shopping at Delray Watch, but... Sometimes when people trade in their watches or sell their watches, they get into, they're doing it because they want to get into a different watch that maybe has been released or that they found. So I typically see people, they maybe allocate a certain budget to watch collecting if that's where they're at. And then the watches that don't resonate with them, they trade them or they swap them for other watches. And so, you know, they don't just amass endless collections. They have some type of limit. Maybe they've come up with, with their with their wife or something like that, or maybe they've just determined the budget, however they determine their life budget, and then they just kind of leave that parked and reallocate as necessary. So that's kind of how I see many collectors deal with, you know, maybe having too many watches or a certain value limit to their collection. Now, this person asks, what is up with brand service times? I was just recently quoted 12 weeks on a basic full overhaul. That's the reality. It's the reality that we're in. I see this being two things. First, yes, people are passionate about watches, but it's a very real career. You have to produce real results, real measurable results. And this can be very difficult in a modern day world where things are increasingly digital. So I see younger people that have a passion for watches, maybe get it from a different perspective, maybe they get into content creation or something from the brand level. Uh, and then those that have a passion for technology are getting into tech, right? AI, software development, coding, app development, coming up with a startup. And so I just see this kind of hole left there where people are kind of just preferring to scratch their technological itch in a different way, if that's how they want to take their career, or their passion for watches in a different way. So there's this kind of, uh, you know, there's a void or there's a gap in the market of watchmakers. There's a shortage of watchmakers considering the other end of this equation. There's just more watches being produced every day and everything is being done to sell more watches. So I do think that brands probably need to hire more watchmakers, but they're still selling watches. So regardless of the serviceability, um, you know, that's going to be an equation that they're going to have to work out in the future. Maybe they'll just swap movements or find, you know, a way to automate uh, the basic overhaul process. That would be very cool to see. You know, maybe robots overhauling movements if they standardize. And we see Rolex going in that direction with the standardization of the movements. So, you know, it's not totally out of the realm of possibilities, even in the short term. Now, this person asks, and I think this is really great to ask as well, why are 
some white gold paddocks just seemingly different than others in terms of the case metal. Patek Philippe has, with their white gold watches, rhodium plated the metal. It gives it a little bit of a different extra sheen or shine to it than you would see in a non-plated uh, white gold watch, and that's something that can help differentiate white gold from other metals such as platinum or stainless steel for that matter. Not that Patek Philippe makes a lot of stainless steel watches, but it's just a little bit something different and people want to know, hey, yeah, this is white gold, right? It's something that white gold watch purchasers kind of like. They like to know that it's white gold, but maybe not everybody. You get the idea. And so, you know, between 2007 onward, there was kind of a mixture of this until about 2012. And then, you know, for the most part, it's been, you know, not done anymore on the white gold cases. Patek Philippe has kind of found a different way to make the different uh, metal look a little bit different in their eyes, or at least differentiate it from other types of, uh, you know, whiter metals. So that's something they used to do. So, you know, with older Patek Philippe's and white gold, you have to be very careful not to polish it because you're going to take the rhodium plating off. It's going to look a little bit different. Uh, and this is something that Patek Philippe Service uh, Center in New York City, the Henri Stern Agency, should be able to help you with. Now, the last question I'm asked for today is, who drives the watch trends? For example, is it consumer-driven brands or other? Well, it's kind of this circular scenario where everyone's kind of working in conjunction. For example, you know, you have a celebrity that might start wearing something, right? We saw this with like the Vacheron 222 and Gold that came out. You had some kind of notable actors and things wearing it, and they weren't sponsored. Maybe they just kind of liked it as an alternative. It was desirable. And then you get all the blogs that write about it. Oh, we saw, you know, this person wearing this watch, you know, one of these you know, actors or something, oh, we saw them wearing this watch, and then other people say, oh, wow, this is going to be more popular, and then they buy it, and then people talk about it, and then because more people are talking about it, more people are writing about it, and then more videos are created about it, and then other brands outside of that brand start seeing, oh, wow, there's buzz, let's make something similar, and so on and so on, and it kind of goes in circles until someone notable uh, likes something different or something else changes. It could be uh, something like a big auction hammer price, right? That might kind of strum up some business for a certain type of design that people like. And that's kind of how it goes. It's, it's a bit of a circle, you know what, right? People kind of say, oh, this is the thing, and they bandwagon up, and they like it, and then everything goes up in that category, and people do it, and then, boom, they drop it, a new trend comes out, and it continues. And that's consumerism, right? That's America. That's where we are today, people just kind of want to do what other people want to do and want to have in the same thing and they follow it uh, and that's what they do. So that's the way I see it, but I would love to see and hear it in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think it's consumers? Do you think it's the brands pushing? Do you think it's societal ideologies or aspects or something else that drives trends and watches? I would love to know your opinion as fellow collectors down below. Guys, I've been answering your questions here today, but please do not forget to check out DelrayWatch.com where we buy, sell, trade watches. You can find me on Instagram, The Real John P, and we'll see you next time. You've been chatting with John P.